Okay, so we're ready to put details on our building. All right, so I think the first thing, actually, I say that, but let's start with the road line down the center. For this, it's very similar to the sidewalk. I'm gonna start at the point. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna make my um, ruler go straight down the middle and but tilt it just a little bit out okay and make a really light line practice making a very light line okay very light line then I'm gonna slant it a little bit to the left and make a very light line now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start dividing those lines up so I'm gonna make my first space and so that I can keep track I'm going to just lightly pencil them in so I know which one is the stripe and which one's the space because what they're going to do is, let me show you an example real quick, they're going to dash down the road and sometimes because the space and the line can be very similar, it can just get confusing. So let's just kind of slightly color in as we go. And then I'm gonna decide how much space I want. So I'll mark off that section and because this space runs off the side of the page, I'm going to guess about how far I want that. I'm going to make another line and just kind of color it in. And you can, if you want, erase as you go. One little tip, and remember, you can always turn your paper. One little tip I really like is using my ruler as an eraser guard. So I will block off that portion and I can go ahead and erase and I just have no fear of erasing what I just drew and then I can turn my paper the other way well yeah mm -hmm, huh. guard and then I'll go ahead and erase and that will work and then I'm going to look at the space and remember how things get smaller and smaller and smaller as they go into the background well the same thing goes with, goes with these dashes I'm gonna say what's well, about that much space I'm going to eyeball this and say that's a little bit less than that one and look at the dash and say, okay, it's a little bit less. Don't go too extreme at first or else they get really small really quick. And then I can go in and erase. Oop, I guarded too much. Can I get on there? There we go. Okay. And go on down the road, okay? So I'll leave this a little bit undone just so that you don't have to watch me do the whole thing because that's not the point of the video. This is not a... Okay, so see how why it's probably... It's just... I think it helps to mark it so that you just don't get too confused. <laughs> I think it gets confusing really quick. Now, once you get to in here, it's just kind of a... You're just reinforcing that line and they just kind of turn into dots. They just go into the background. And then you can go ahead and erase in between, okay? So go ahead and pause if you need to as we go so that you have that there. Okay, so the dots, the dashes are done except that, you know, I go in and darken them, make them look nice and that would be that. Okay, let's look at our buildings. We're gonna put some details on and let's just start on the side and do something kind of general. Let's make a big display window. So I'm gonna decide how big I want that store window to be. I'm going to draw it about an inch from the concrete. And I think I'll go, what the, let's go, how many inches is that, four inches? Of course, you know, this is just, in case you need to, you really like something to measure, I'm going to go to the point. I'm going to go, I'm matching the point up with the bottom of my display window. I'm holding my ruler with fingers that are splayed out. I'm making sure again, I'm double checking the point and the bottom of the window are attached and then I go ahead and I draw my line to the left. Okay, there's the bottom of my window. I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna go from the point to the top of the window I'm going to hold my fingers so the rule does the ruler doesn't pivot and draw my line for my window out here. Okay. Another thing I'd like to do is to draw and make my window look a little bit more um, I 
don't know, polished. So I'm gonna do what I, I just call double lining where I go ahead and I draw a second line in there. And I am having to follow the point when I go, when I, when I have the top and the bottom of the window or the top of the bottom of the door, all that goes to the point. I line it to the point and I go ahead and draw it. And it just gives it a little bit more of a look that, I don't know, it just looks nicer. If you really want to indicate glass, and this is kind of in cartooning mode, but you can make a kind of couple little lines like that. Make sure they're fairly straight, not curvy, or actually maybe even use your ruler. Okay, so we're just going to insinuate that. Let's do something like that over here. I'm going to go about an inch from. I'm just going to match because it'll be easy and you can you'll just start seeing it just stays with the with the same rules. The bottom and the top of these things go to the point. Okay? Drawing my second line just to make it look kind of neat. Up and down. And now we've given ourselves just kind of a, a framework to start with, okay? All right, let's go to the next one. I'm gonna do it from the left. I'm going to make a big double door. So I'm going to go straight up. I don't know if you need a measurement. <laughs> I know a lot of you really like that. It's about four inches tall. Of course, you can make it what you want. And then I'm going to do the top of the door and then go down. I'm meeting the concrete, okay? If I don't meet the concrete, do you see how it looks like a shop window? Because you can't you can't use it as a as a walkway. So make sure it meets the concrete. I'm going straight up and down and meeting the concrete down here on the sidewalk. And then I'm gonna guesstimate a little bit as to where half is and then just go a little bit inward. Because remember, things get smaller as they go to the background. So I'm just going to go a little bit offset of center. Not much because these aren't that separated. And I'm going to do a double line door because these are two glass doors in my make-believe world and two doors would make two lines. But I also like the idea, like I said, of double lining things in general because it just makes it look more fine. And you can double line as you go, just depends. I just like making sure I like where the line went and then putting it in. Oh, that line didn't go so hot. Okay, there we go. So there's my double door. I'm gonna put a handle in. So I'm gonna decide how much I want, how big, how large, how tall I want the handle. I'm going to put the handle on the left side because I'm on the left side of my page. It's a little bit easier to draw the next handle by going to the point using this as my guide. So I'll take the top of the handle, put it to the point, and then I'll know where to start my handle, somewhere in here, okay? Do you see how it goes a little bit higher up on the page? This, this dot, if I were to draw a line, like look at my ruler, watch it go up the page. It's lower down. Things that are closer to you are lower down on the page and the ruler creeps up as it follows the lines of perspective, it's it's called hierarchy. You're going to find that, that objects go higher and higher and higher up the page the further they go back into the page. So my line's gonna be about there. I'm gonna look at this and mark, mark it up next to the point, line it up, and say my handle will end about there, and then go ahead and draw that line. So see how this handle and this handle are you know, one's higher, but that's because they go to the point and that's gonna help your eye know that these handles are the same exact size. I'm gonna bring a little line straight just to make them a little bit thicker so someone can grab them. There we go. Now, if we want these handles to look like they're handlebars, what we can do is we can make just flat little See the little, I made little rods that they stick out from the glass door. You can do that. I'm using my ruler, so it looks nice. Like that. So now I have little handles. Okay, 
Let's go on the other side. Now let's make it, I'm sorry, let's make an awning right here. Um, let me do the outline of the awning first and then we will go ahead and put the on, or outline of the door that the awning will go over first. And so the door, I'm gonna review with the door. The door, I'm gonna start on the left side. I'm gonna make it a little bit, I don't know, about the same height as that other door. Line it up to the point, make my line, draw it on down, and I'm gonna put my awning over this door. Now I'm not gonna double line it just yet because I want, um, I want to wait till I have the awning. I'm gonna have to erase some of this door at the top. Now awnings have a bit of a side to them that face you. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We're gonna draw this. So this little side pops out from the building, and because it is flat on and blockish at you, it's not it's not flush like a window is part of that side of the building. This is actually perpendicular to the building. So we're going to draw it as if it was one of, you know how we did the blocking up here? It, it's very flat on. We talked about that. Things that face you front on are going to be very, um, almost like up and down and side to side. They don't go to the point. But the second you get to the side of that object, it goes to the point. So the awning, let's pop it out. We could actually just use this door frame as our guide. I'm going to go flat with my ruler and I'm drawing kind of a, right angle and then I'm going to draw an arc. Now this is very much like how you would draw a you know letter in block in one point perspective. Block lettering in one point perspective it's kind of got that arc like a, the side of a B or the side of a C. Okay lining it up to the point I'm going to use just as much as I need. I'm not I mean I don't have to go all the way back. So I would have to erase it all in here. So you just line it up. Go ahead and line it up there. Now to cut this off, I have to think about what it did on the left side in order to know what I'm gonna do on the right side. Because it arced like this, I'm just gonna copy that arc and put it on over here and then erase that little tail. And again, you can use your ruler as a guard to erase the little tail. And then you can draw stripes. Those stripes would be if you wanted, they'd be running parallel to that. I'm going to put a stripe over here with the hay. However you want to do it. So now we have an awning. And I made that a little bit flat, didn't I? So instead of erasing it all, I'm just going to turn my paper and widen it and fix it. Now it looks better. Okay, and again, I guess my eraser guard is too guardy. There, I have my awning. Now, I showed you how to do the doors. You can go ahead and go on in and do the doors. Do any handles, details you wanted, double line it, things like that. Now, I have had a request to do a revolving door. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Um, Let's do a revolving door. So I'm going to make another door frame. And actually, this is, I have a really nice wide section here. Choose a, a wider building. If you're going to do this, this is not required. This is just for fun. Okay. I'm just going to show you all sorts of details. I would like each building to have some detail to it. Okay. So on this building, what I'm going to do is draw my doorway. And again, this is not required. This is just for fun. If you think you'd like to do this, put it in perspective, just like we did the other doors. Now, a revolving door, as you're walking down the sidewalk, you want to make sure, if you were to build this building, you would want to make sure that that revolving door would not accidentally whack somebody that's just walking by and not going into the building. So you have to consider the fact that you need to have an area to put the door in, almost like um, a, 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 it has to have a, a cubby to put the revolving door in. So I'm going to go ahead and make a flat line in here, and that's going to make it look like I have a little room in here to put that revolving door. And then I would need to decide where the revolving door, where would be the, the post for the revolving door. Let me draw, I'm going to hack it out real quick so maybe you can understand where we're going with this before I make it look bad. <laughs> before I actually make it look amazing, right? Okay, so 
this line is in perspective, this line is down. We're making this cubby, and, and it's like you're making a box. You're, it's, this part you're not going to see, okay? This is, all, this is all covered by a wall, but this is what's going on. You're making sure that you have this post that goes down into your box where you're going to have people step into the, the door. Now, because this is like a pinwheel or it's got these tabs that, you know, you walk into those, those glass doors, those doors cannot exceed this, this line or else they'll accidentally hit somebody as they're walking down the sidewalk. So I'm going to draw. That would be the foot of one side of my door and this would be the other side of my door and there's my glass door and then on the other side of the door I'm just gonna draw this out real quick so you can kinda see where we're going with it okay I'll show you how to do it but it's almost like a plus sign at the bottom and a plus sign at the top and they're parallel and then down and you've got these this revolving door but we're not gonna see all of it we're only gonna see a little bit of it do you see how much goes away so that's why I decided to draw in the cage it it's going a lot of it's going to go away okay but if you can understand what's happening in there so we can make a pretty thin here's let's say the rod that it all sits on and it sits down here on the floor in the center of my little cubby I'm gonna go ahead and draw the door here's the bottom of the door and the top of the door we may not actually see but I could kind of make it dark and then I can go ahead and go up and make it look like it's glass oops well that makes it look like it's got a crease oh through my eraser and then I can go ahead and draw maybe the other part of the revolving door over there and draw the side of it here and there's the bottom of it so draw the rod inside a little bit darker and there I have a revolving door so it's not I don't know if that makes sense, but it is your, uh, any any door that you have that's going to go around and around. It's going to have basically it has a panel of glass. Oh, I should just do it over here. It has a panel of glass, and that panel of glass is intersected with another panel of glass. Does that make sense? And again, you're just not going to see it all. You're only going to see part of it as it's at the bottom of your little cubby. Okay, that is not required. It's just for fun. I had someone ask me about it, okay? Okay, another thing I got asked. We got brought, oh, um, bricks. Let's talk about bricks. I am going to, let's just do it on this. Let's first do stone. Stone is just like bricks, except it's bigger. So I'm going to go ahead and really lightly throw in some lines of perspective along this building. Big lines for my stones. Notice how it's fanning. And I'm making my those courses of stonework relatively the same height. Now a lot of you have played with Legos and you understand that you can't stack, you would never stack one Lego on top of another Lego on top of another Lego. You have to stagger them so that there's stability to your building. So the same happens with stone and brick. I am going to take this course of stone and make a line through it like that. I now have two stones and those two stones have one stone sitting on top and then I'm gonna make another course of stonework. Now stonework doesn't always have an exact pattern like brickwork does, but it is staggered. So I'll have a course here going along and I'm just gonna kind of round those out a little bit because it's stone and they're more massive. So you can kind of make them and shade it. 
a little bit. You can even make some maybe kind of dirty and rough cut. I'm going to make another staggered. I'm not going to keep the line straight up the, the whole thing. You just have to keep kind of staggering those stones. I'm going to kind of round those corners out because they're usually not incredibly sharp unless they're really polished like marble. I'm going to stagger it over here. Kind of go up. So can you see I'm just making sure that they're not stacked one on top of the other. Now I am going to make, I think that they would cut it so that it would be around the doorway. And sometimes they throw a little one in and make that one stone. A little bit of a stone there. Like that. So now I have stonework. Okay, and you can go all the way up. Uh, let me do this course along here. Okay, now when I get to the side here, this stone is being viewed by both sides. This stone doesn't just go away. Don't start making up something completely different over here. You have to remember this is the corner of the same rock. So that stone is going to go along the same course line. You don't want to make this all of a sudden really tiny up here. That just doesn't make sense. It'd be like having a box and then all of a sudden on the other side it doesn't correspond with the height of the box. So it is one piece. Keep that base uniform. Make sure it makes sense logically. And then you can go ahead and, okay, so that would be stonework. Now brickwork's a little different because this one doesn't, it doesn't always sit exactly in the right pattern because each stone is unique and the stone mason has fitted them like unique pieces. Now bricks are completely uniform, so they go along the same coursework. You would go ahead, but of course they're thinner. You go ahead and you make your lines in perspective and these take a lot of little noodly doodly work and I'm gonna go I'm gonna show you this part too we'll just do the top or I'll just do the top and uh, again this um, is not required this is just kind of you should try it though along maybe like a top of a building if you don't want to do the whole thing but you should make sure you know how to do bricks so all right so what you're going to do is and you do this the whole way down but you look at one and you decide how long is the brick. I think my bricks are going to be about this big. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that along this line right here. Boy, these are big bricks, but I hope you can see it. So I'll do those. Now, halfway through the brick, you're going to do the next brick. They're halfway through. That brick is another brick sitting on top, just like kind of we do with Legos. Halfway through this brick, another brick line. Now that is the set pattern. So what we do is we look at this coursework and I'm going to brick, skip, brick, skip, brick. Okay, I'm going to go to the next one on that course line. I've got my brick, skip, brick, skip, brick. And now I'm going to go to the next one. There's my brick line. This course is already done. I'm doing this blank. This is all blank in here. Brick, skip that. Brick, skip, brick. Brick, skip, brick. And you would go all the way down. Now remember, this is the end of a brick. This is a longer side of the brick. This is the longer side of the brick, so therefore it's the shorter side of the brick. This is the shorter side of the brick. This is for the longer side of the brick, and it would go along the same coursework. This is the longer side of the brick. This is the shorter side of the brick. And of course, it's going to line up perfectly with what you're doing here. 
Okay, so those are bricks. That how that, that's how that works. You do the chimneys, whatever. And of course, you can think about where would it be darker. You can kind of shade in there and put that in. Okay, windows. I'm going to throw windows in here above. So I will decide how big I want my window. I'm going to go to the point for the bottom of the window. I'm going to make a light guideline and go to the top of the window to the point and make a light guideline and my window is going to end here so it can be darker. I want space between my windows so I'm going to go vertically decide how big a window is and then skip some space and there's my other window and I erase that bar And I can go ahead and double line them to make them look really nice. A little bit of detail in there. I'm trying to go a little bit faster because you guys have been so patient. And I have plain windows. If you'd like to put the bars in them, the panes of glass, I would go up and down what I think is about halfway up and down and then I would cross to the point like that that's the basic window if I'm gonna do a whole section of windows I'll leave room for my door but I would make it just like that go down 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 these are like apartment windows. I go to the point, make some guidelines for those windows. And then I'm going to go straight down, cut through, erase any parts where I might have overshot the line or close up any parts where I undershot it. It's just not completely closed up. And then go ahead and I'm going to cut these windows really kind of small so you can see how to do this. There's my one section. I'm going to make some space here. Go ahead and do the next course. And the next space. Now I could keep them actually like that. That looks really nice for, you know, office windows. If I really wanted to make them separated, then I go ahead and I would erase in each little space and double line them and make them look a little bit more segmented and separated, okay? And that's how you do windows. And of course, if you're going to do a window up here, those are super easy. I mean, that's just I'm just going to go around the side of my ruler. They just follow the the angle of the of the building it's just that square on okay all right let's see if I got that I think okay now if I want to add in let's say any kind of sign work I want to tell everybody that this is um, a candy store or something here's my sign and if I if it is on the side of the building as if it were glued to a building it would go just like a window and then the letters would be just like windows. So maybe here, boy, candy, is that going to fit in there? Let's try it. C, I don't think so. A, N, D, Y. Okay. So I'm fitting those within my framework. Here's my C. Here's kind of my A my N, my D, and my Y. Now the crossbar of my A has to go to the point. If I had E, those, the top and the middle and the bottom, all that would have to go to the point. And then I can fatten those up a little bit, but the, even the C it has to go to the point. So the top of the C, the bottom of the C and then I can make it thick and do the block lettering for it
and now it's gonna it is gonna look you know it just looks like it's been painted on the side of the building but let's say that it's one of those pop-out signs if it's a pop-out sign then it would do something like this and this is gonna look like it's candy land because I'm advertising candy all the way down let me do it on this side pop-out building billboard things that pop out from the building you'll see they are really easy you just make it go perpendicular and square on I'm erase any lines that make it look see-through and then you just write you know try to space it out but you've got <laughs> of course I didn't space that very well Let's make it really fat and squatty. Not spaced. I'm just trying to really rush. Sorry about that. But you see, it's it's just straight on. And then you can make um, posts that pop out from the building. And it's going to look like one of those kind of illuminated uh, boards that come out from the from the building okay those work uh, let's look at some details you want to put in of course we have this narrow this narrow um, walkway but if you decided you wanted to put in say um, a potted plant or a trash can or something seriously those are easy you just make sure it's kind of rounded on the bottom and just draw it it'll fit in just fine and then I've got my little you want a tree or something now please don't the idea is that you learn perspective drawing it's not that you just cake the whole thing with trees so that you don't have you know you, look at me I get to cover everything up but the tree okay so please don't major in covering up I I'd like to see the details are in um, perspective so okay well okay I'm clearly not making a tree very well. Sorry. <laughs> I hope you get the idea. So there's my trees. Uh, what else? Um, light posts. They can either just come out from the building again. So the bracket. I'm going to put the bracket into perspective. The bottom and the top go to the point. And then I can have that street lamp come out. and shine light on the whole thing. If you wanted it on every building and it was supposed to look uniform, then please remember that those have to go to the point. If they were, if you had like, let's say I did a whole set of trees or a whole set of lamp posts, you're going to want to put the top of the tree to the point because they were all planted about at the same time. So you would need to think about the top of the planter because city planners do this. They make sure that everything's about the same and that's what makes it look so charming down the a street so those would be in perspective too as you draw your pots they're all kind of so I made guidelines to make sure see how those trees look like your eye just naturally knows but I have guided I know that the top of the pot and the bottom of the pot go along the point I've made sure that they line up top of the pot top of the pot top of the pot or planter I should say bottom of the planter bottom of the planter oh that's a little short bottom of the planter bottom of the planter top of the tree top of the tree top of the tree top of the tree so they all go to the point together same with you know like I said um, any kind of lights or those kinds of things that you're fashioning all right now when you get back in here the details are going to get really dinky and they get a little easier because you're just kind of um, insinuating those things. They get very kind of fuzzed out, but if you don't make them to the point, they also can look wrong really fast. So, like, obviously, this is easy to do because these are square on, but make sure you're not just um, blobbing things in there. Try to line it up and just lightly, loosely sketch it out using your ruler and now I have a window so you don't have to put a lot into those those like I said will go really fast but please use your ruler and now I've got I've got some windows back in there okay all right so I 
think that kind of covers what we uh, wanted to do. City, I will say, I'll just say one last thing. I know this has been a long video. Um, when you go to do um, windows for cities, they don't tend to all be apartment windows. They tend to be these kind of long, glossy strips of... I don't know. Look at go. Just look at some pictures. Um, you can Google some images of uh, city windows, but they they just tend to be kind of straight looking. These kinds of windows like that. Um, this drawing, of course, is I think just gorgeous. Explaining it. So you've got those. Oh, uh, these. Yeah. It's, yeah. There's this this whole section. They've got sections in there, so it's a really good example. She even put a little bit of brickwork, trim work, and then some glass. So, yeah, they're good ideas. Uh, last thing, I want to show you the stacking. I don't have a lot of room to stack in my buildings, but if you want to make it really crowded in here, all you have to do is throw a line up, put it into perspective, make it flat in the back, Go down and go down. You now have stacked a building in the back. And you can do this again and again and again. Just check a line up, put it into perspective, go straight down, and then you've got that, you know, straight down and however one however you want it. You can also, you know, make um, added details and throw things in. You know, architectures architects do a lot of funky things so you can look at pictures of it but you could throw in little flags and that but again the idea of all this is to just make sure that we're doing one point perspective okay so please don't you know really major in putting in helicopters and all sorts of details that aren't going to the point I, I really want to practice how we go to the point it's it's very important that you you know how to do this stuff 